Before this episode starts, we thought it right to join the world in honouring Adam Johnson. A year ago, the hockey world was deeply saddened to learn of Adam's passing, and with last weekend being such a touching tribute from across the league, the thoughts of everyone continue to be with Adam's family, friends and teammates. The entire Elite League dearly misses Adam, and we will never forget him. Hello everyone, and welcome to The Storm Report, your weekly podcast exclusively for the Manchester Storm. I'm joined once again today by Aidan Millen. Aidan, how are you? Good evening, I'm not too bad, sir. How are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. I'm doing all right. I think we had a fairly good weekend. And uh, Max Artis has been working on his Mancunian accent, haven't you, Max? Evening, yeah. So uh, I've tried to dabble in the Mancunian accent. You know, I feel like I've been here for a few years now, and uh, I think it's starting to rub off on me now. (laughs) Should get you to do it on commentary. Only joking. (laughs) We are joined this week exclusively by Dean Byrne, the Storm TV cameraman. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's been an honour to be asked to join the podcast. Very excited. Uh, thank you. Uh, we we did talk about this, I think, maybe off air the other week, but I, I always like to take the mick out of Aiden because he's slightly losing his accent, ever so slightly. No, 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 we, do, we don't. No, my wife says this. You know, she's from <laughs> France, so she shouldn't really know the difference. But no, I get very offended if you say I'm losing my manc accent. <laughs> well, that is, that is one of the point. great reasons. <laughs> Why we've brought you in, Dean, is because we need to bring some Manchester into this Manchester Storm podcast. So hopefully you guys are watching at home. Uh, resonate with that. Hope you like that. Uh, watching, should say listening. We're going to start off this week by talking about the games that had taken place the previous weekend. We had a loss at home to the Coventry Blaze. Then we went on the road to Nottingham and we took care of business over there. And we brought back the two points. Who were your star performers, Dean? Uh, Well, firstly, I think against the Coventry Blaze game, my standout performer, I mean, it's a bit of an obvious one, Jake Durflinger, obviously. He put out a really good performance in that game, you know, obviously getting us a goal. And I think, really, he was the one that helped drive us to get them goals uh, but also I would say as a notable mention Connolly put in a good performance as well you know um, for any of the people who were the, obviously in the storm shelter for that game you know, it was a very rough and ready blaze team and I think you know it's quite easy to pick on someone who's young but you know I think uh, Connor's got that Mancunian toughness in breaded in him and uh, it was good to see a little bit come out of it in that game Yeah normally when you think about playing against a 17-year-old, you'd think of the phrase, pick on someone your own size. But I think we're forgetting there that Conor Lee is actually quite massive and he's able to, <laughs> to hold his own. Um, I, I can agree with that as, as an honourable mention. I'm probably going to go with Grant Heber. I think we're, we're going we're gonna to go with some fairly obvious choices so far from that Triple H line we spoke about the previous week. But Grant Heber, he's always reliable. I think when you're missing certain players, we're so glad to have Steven Johnson back, by the way. We'll get on that later. But having Grant Heber, someone that can go into the face-off dot and more often than not come out with the puck is something that you just cannot overstate. It's so, so important to get that right, and he just does that consistently. So I would probably end up giving my shout for this week to Grant Heber. Aiden, who stood out to you? I mean, in that game, it, 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 I mean, it was, it, was a, it was a tricky game to really pick out the stars, being honest. I think... Shall, shall we go with the weekend as a whole? Okay. Weekend as a whole, I'm going to take Mr. CJ Garcia. And we'll talk about it in more detail about specifically the Nottingham game, but given that was the undoubted highlight of the weekend, um, that, that's kind of where CJ really stood out for me. Um because I'm not sure there's too many guys on Saturday who would have been coming off the ice happy. Yeah, no, there, there was there was work to do afterwards. I think if you have listened to the post-game interview with Mike Flanagan, he said that there was a lot of work to do and kind of a lot to rectify the next day when we did make the trip down to Motor Point Arena. And I think that the players definitely put on a better performance that day. So let, let's let's move straight on to that for now then. Let's talk about why you chose CJ Garcia. Well, in Nottingham, 
Despite the fact that he was on the sh- on the team sheet, we didn't see Joe Morrow on the ice, so it put us down to five D. And it was a very deliberate road game, as far as our tactics were concerned. It's funny because like, obviously, just last week I was talking about how the fact we went to Cardiff and we kind of went toe to toe with them. That wasn't really the case when we went to Nottingham on Sunday. We very much went in there to make the most of our chances. But then when we when Nottingham had the puck in our zone, it was keep them to the outside. You know, it was because it, Nottingham got a lot of good skaters. It's big ice. So they essentially just let them have the outside. They could skate all the way around it. And then when the shots were on for the Panthers, Evan was making the first save. And then the defense were all over the rebounds. There's very few occasions where it was a Panthers player who got to the rebound first. It was often the defenseman who got on it and got it out there. And for me, CJ is the guy who kind of stood out amongst the defensemen for that effort in particular on Sunday. I think CJ Garcia personifies work ethic, and that's something that uh, Mike Flanagan definitely looks for. I would also say that, because we, we've been shorthanded uh, on the defensive end a number of times so far to start this season, we've been quite unlucky with that, with the likes of Chase Harrison um, to drop out for a couple of games. And I think the likes of CJ Garcia have really shone in those moments. They've had to step up, play a lot of ice times. I remember being on commentary and, and talking about the fact that he probably played back-to-back shifts more times than... I think I saw him more on the ice than I did off the ice um, a couple of weeks ago. But he's one of those people that, you know, you can rely on. And I bet for a head coach, that's a really, really good feeling. Talk us through the Coventry game a little bit, Dean. Talk us about what happened there. Well, you mentioned about, um, obviously, players you're not seeing off the ice. One uh, player I did notice see off the ice, and I was very happy to see him, was obviously um, Cam Critchlow. You know, he came back, obviously... He's noticeably off the ice at the moment. Um, but having your captain there, just even on the bench as sort of a coaching role, I think it does give the team a bit of that extra, you know, support and that extra encouragement to go and deliver a game. Obviously, Cam, we obviously know he's a sort of um local hero in the team now. He's become a fan favourite for the storm for a number of years. So the fact that he's coming in, even when he's injured, to show his support and try and even do that extra mile shows why he is such a good captain. But yeah, I think for the Blades game, like I said, um, obviously we came in the first period, we were very dominant. You know, we got our, obviously Durfling got the first goal, Hubert got his um, second with the, I've got to say from where I was stood, it was a beautiful assist from Morrow there. And I think just after that, it just kind of, it just turned itself around, really. I think we were just everything we were trying, it just kind of didn't work, and it just kind of made us feel worse and worse and worse. And by the third period, we were just we were out of options, really. But I think we turned it around, like saying Nottingham, hoping going forward we won't have to deal with uh, anything like that. I would love to be a fly on the wall in the Coventry Blaze dressing room after the first period. Because I definitely, I think it's it's an objective thing to say. We, we were the better team. I mean, the goal sheet showed that. But I think we played better as well, like you say, in the first period. We were by far the better team. But we came out and it was just a new look Coventry Blaze. They're a lot more physical on the puck. They're a lot more um, aggressive. They were kind of first to many of the second chances. And I just, yeah, I'd love to know what, uh, I think, Kevin Moore, what he said to them in that break because he must have really got them going. I want to just go back a little bit on what you said about Critch being on the bench, because for those of us in the storm shelter, it was great to see him back and he's been absolutely itching to get back. But it's, I don't know, I want to talk to you about this. It's good leadership. Normally, if you're a, if you're injured and you want to step away and you want to focus on rehabilitation, but you keep turning up to the storm shelter as someone rehabbing an injury yourself, you still turn up week in, week out. What's that like? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you can still see me hobbling around the ice. <laughs> I tell you, when you've had an operated knee and you, you stood in the cold for a couple of hours, you're kind of going quite fresh, but after a couple of hours, you're like, oh, yeah, hobbling about. But, you know, Critch is the, Critch is the team leader. You know, I mean, how to, how to even describe it, but it is really tough going through that rehabilitation, as, as I'm sure it is for Critch. But, you know, he, he wants to be there helping the guys as much as he can. And there's no better position for him to do that than on the bench. I mean, that that's. What Matt Ginn did before he went into his now looking like a successful coaching career. And 
you know, I don't know if Critch wants to go the same way, but I think there's certainly worse ways to go about it. I'm hoping there's certainly plenty more years left in the tank with Critch. Um, but yeah, it can only help the team him being on there. I think we all are. He had such a hot start to the season, and I think he'll definitely be looking to return that whenever we do get to see him back on ice. Obviously, everyone at Storm TV is wishing him a speedy recovery. If you are a frequent listener so far of the Storm Report, you'll know that it's round about this point where we bring in a player to talk about what it's like on the ice because our insight can only take you so far. And this week, I'm proud to announce that it is no other than your number 77, Owen Griffiths, on the podcast. Enjoy. The Storm Report podcast is proud to announce the Bowl with the Storm is back for 2024. The fan favourite event is headed to Atlantic Bowl in Altrincham on the 27th of November, and from 7 till 9pm, you can go bowling with your favourite Storm players. There are 10 lanes available to book, and you can even reserve a player to play in your lane for just £15. But hurry, because it's a first-come, first-served basis, and these things sell out fast. Prices and booking can be found on the Storm Support app now, so don't miss your chance to bowl with the Storm. Owen, how are you? Yeah, all good. All good. Had a, had a good couple of days now, starting the new week, so yeah, all good. Fresh off the back of a win against Nottingham, and then I believe you guys had a bit of a Halloween party afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, Green Room were kind enough to to host us after we got back from the Nottingham game, so a bit of a quick turnaround, but you know, a happy bus on the way back and watched a bit of uh, a football, as the uh, Canadians and Americans call it. So not the proper football that you know we watch. Um, but yeah, so we watched a bit of that on the bus and then um, got back, had a bit of a quick turnaround, got into my very poor Jedi Knight costume and then we're, yeah, headed uh, straight to the bar, met up with everyone and we had a good few drinks and a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a celebration and just, you know, a bit of team bonding kind of thing. You know, it's still still guys still getting to know each other and, you know, just letting each other's hair down and just trying to you know, have a bit of banter and some good time. So yeah, it was fun. It was uh it was it was quite needed. Was there any stipulations put on the game on Sunday night in Nottingham determining how that party was gonna go? I think um I think it would have been a very different party had we had we lost, that's for sure. Um especially with obviously the way things went down um at home, uh which is obviously what we weren't very pleased about. So it was good to have a good performance and and you know, get uh, the the two points away in Nottingham, which is, you know, they're a good team, and uh, for us to go there and get a result is, uh, you know, uh, something very good to build on going into next weekend and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think more beers may have been drunk because we did win. <laughs> well deserved, very well deserved. Yeah. I mean, I live in Nottingham, so anytime you can put one over on those guys, so I can load it over my friends for the next few weeks, I'm a very happy boy. So thank you. Uh, good, good. <laughs> You'll uh, you'll get to wear some some sort of special costume on the ice this week as well with the the new jerseys. Have you had a chance to actually get your hands on them yet as players? Uh, I've seen one. I actually seen one in the room. Uh, I think it was the start of this week, maybe. Um, yeah, and it looks it does look pretty cool to be honest with you. I can't actually remember the last time I wore a Halloween jersey. It might have been my back when I was in maybe Swindon or something. Um, but yeah, like I, I think they're pretty cool. I think they're awesome. So yeah, I'm all for like a bit of a change and you know switching things up and stuff. And uh, I think it's cool for the fans as well to see us, uh, you know, in the in the different jerseys for you know the different holidays and stuff. So this one's a pretty cool and it's quite out there. I'll say that. It's definitely yeah. one of my favorite um, different jerseys that we get to wear. I think. It's cool. One of my favorite things about this team is that we have those different types of jerseys. It'll be cool to see where it ranks amongst all the other ones that will come out later in the week. Dean, did you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, um, obviously with the new jerseys and stuff like that, if you could say, if you could design a Halloween jersey based on, say, a horror film, what, what design would you go for? God, now you probably asked the worst player on the team this question because... <laughs> I despise uh, uh, horror films. I hate them. There's nothing worse. Like that would be my form of torture, really. 
Um, not because not because I don't think they're good. It's because I just get terrified. I, I went and watched uh, a movie in the cinema with my family and everything like that, and I ended up having to walk out and sit in the foyer for the, for the last, like, 40 minutes of the film just because I was terrified. And uh, so, like, it, but in terms of the ones I've actually watched, I love a comedy and things like that. But So this one really doesn't work. Uh, but, like, scary movie, things like that, I like those type of films. Um, but in terms of, like, out-and-out out scary films, I watched one that was called The Orphan. Seen okay. that one? And now, well, that one's a terror. That one's terrifying. So something like that, like little creepy dolls, something like that. That would scare the life out of me. So any any time there'd be a jersey like that, something to do with that, it, yeah, it just freaked me. With the eyes too big, yeah, not for me. That watched that movie <laughs> Smile last night. Like we could do, do one with the smiling storm badge. Yeah, there you go. Something like that. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. As long if it's got eyes on a normal face that are slightly bigger than what they should be, that just gives me the creeps. So. <laughs> That's not for me. So yeah. if that you got one on a jersey, I think I'd be pretty scared. My days for the jerseys <laughs> next year. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the jersey this year is really cool. It's got a really cool design. If you haven't seen it already, those of you that are listening at home, feel free to check it out. It is on the store and available to buy, or you can just go to the store yourself. I want to ask you about instead of being scary and dressing up off the ice about being scary on the ice, because when I'm up in the weather tower commentating, I seemingly always am able to predict who wins the face offs. And you make it very easy for me because you never lose them whenever I'm there. Whenever I'm paying attention to it, you are always winning them. So what's the secret? What makes you so good? I don't think there's a secret. I think there's it's it. Like it's a bit of a 50-50, but I will say there is techniques to it, obviously, and it's something that you know a player like myself that uh, whether it uh, be in a center or dependable on penalty kills or power plays, it's important to get those those draws won. So I think it's one of the elements that I've had to add to my game to get good at in order to you know give myself them opportunities to play those minutes and. Um, yeah, hopefully you can keep watching and keep the luck coming. Let's go. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's hard because like you know, different different teams, different players like to do certain things on different draws, and I try my best to have a little look or remember from the last time I played them and things of what their tendencies might be. And it's 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 also a lot of help from from your teammates as well. Like if I'm if I'm lining up for a draw, you'll you or anyone for that matter really, you'll see them always having a chat with people like saying like okay this is what we'll do if we win it this way or whatever but the main one is is just come in pick up them loose packs and you know try and make our lives a bit easier so um so yeah i think it's a bit of that um just reminding people because like every, like any every time everyone touches the ice i don't care who you are everyone wants to score a goal so when you're getting out there it's trying to just make sure that like the guys focus on well you can't score the goal if you don't have the pack so let's get the draw one and then go from there. So um yeah, it's just it's that's something I've tried to like take a bit of pride in and thankfully so far it's been going okay. Um hopefully you can keep watching, bring the luck and uh, I'll keep winning them. You do your best and I'll do mine. Um, yeah. hopefully that, that continues. I yeah, think exactly. it's really good insight then of like players talking on the ice. That's the stuff that fans will probably always want to know about, but never get to. Mm. Is that something that you maybe teach players like Connor Lee and Josh Brawley? Because I think it's been a really cool responsibility placed on you this year of being, of centering that line for, for certain games where you go out there and you're there with those young players. Is there kind of like a mentoring role going on there at all? It's, it's funny you say that because I, we we had a meeting with coach today and uh, with Miltz as well in there and uh, we had a good chat and like talk things through and like what we we want from us and uh, like whether it's us playing on a line together or if I'm spotting in with them and things and um, yeah I'd say like like you said like that communication side of it like regardless of who you play with like a huge thing and um, yeah I think maybe you might need to give like you know guys who are a bit more inexperienced some encouragement or just them pointers and reminders of like, oh, this guy's, uh, you know, like he's a lefty. He's going to try and walk the blue line a certain way or whatever and make sure your body's in the lane with the park, not sticks and things like just different things that like, 
you know, maybe like more experienced guys don't necessarily think about, but the young players probably never really thought of. So maybe just trying to give them them pointers and um, yeah, for sure. Like, you know, like it's always nice to play with guys who um, have a lot of energy for, for uh, when they're their first, you know, like maybe full-time committed year in the league and getting a bit bit of an opportunity. So, um, so yeah, like it's, it's uh, always nice to have guys like that around as well. Right. Because like, I remember when I was that age and I was like in and around the Cardiff Devils set up growing up or whether it was on a two-way or training with them every morning or, you know, I got called up when I was like 16 and, uh, you know, managed to like go on the road with them for a couple of games and stuff. And, you know, it's just, it's just like being a sponge. You're just like at that age, it's just all you ever really want to do. So, um, like I was, I was okay at school. I wasn't great. I, I, I enjoyed it when I was there, but now that I'm done, I'm kind of happy about it. Um, but um, but like hockey was always like what I wanted to do. Like if you asked anyone when I was in school, they'd say the same thing. So like when I got the opportunity to do that and see how it actually is, it was like, oh, like this is awesome. I'm just trying to soak up information and things like that. So I think it, it, it makes it easy to, you know, give these pointers and tweaks and answer questions, ask questions to them when, you know they're willing to listen and willing to buy into what you what you're telling them. Yeah, um, going off on that, Owen, as well. Like you said, obviously you went through the Cardiff Devils Academy, and I think a lot of our listeners, obviously, they'll either know someone or they'll have a, a child of themselves in the academy. Obviously, we have a lot of uh, our Storm Academy players are hoping to obviously breakthrough you know like the likes of Connolly um what would you say is the sort of biggest piece of advice you can give to a young player who wants to try and sort of go professional like the, the main thing for me is and I'm sure you would have heard this a lot from other people as well is the main thing is enjoying it like if you if you really do not enjoy enjoy what you're doing and what you're putting the time into it's uh you, you you're gonna you know, take steps back and you're not really going to be putting that full committed effort into what you would do as if it's something that you love. So thankfully I was in a position where like, I, I, I loved every second of being out on the ice. I thought it was amazing. And like, um, when I was growing up, I played football as well. And uh, it, for me, it was like, wasn't even close. It was like, I just wanted to go really, I was playing football, but it was just something to do. <laughs> I think it was my more of a, like my parents, like get out of the house. <laughs> So like when I was playing hockey, it was like I was itching to go all the time. And um, for me, like when you're at when you're in academies like that, I know Manchester's academy right now is in like a great spot with, you know, people coming through and um, availability and the coaching and things like that. And it's it's an amazing opportunity for the for the for the players and the, the people involved to you know hopefully reap the rewards of that one day and. I think with the kids there now, I, I would honestly say the main thing for me is enjoy it, compete, and enjoy spending time with your teammates and helping each other get better. Like push push each other. Like I, I when I was in Cardiff, I had guys like Callum Buglas, uh, players older than me like Benny Davis, Adam Harding, all all these players, Kieran Latchford, Joe Morris, who at the time were realistically they were a lot better than me, and I was pushing and trying to get to the stage where. I could play and compete against those players. So like where this academy is coming through, you're going to be getting that. And it's about looking at who's who's that person in front of you and trying to essentially be there and join them and be there, be on that line, be on that next team, be on whoever, whoever it is, you know? So I think it's that that's very important and just making sure that you're bringing your best uh, when you come to practice and enjoy it enjoying what you do is something that should be something you strive towards no matter if you're a ice hockey player playing on the ice or whatever your profession is at home you've got to try and enjoy it the best you can and hopefully owen you're enjoying life in manchester i wanted to ask you a little bit because you're part of a, of a trio as far as i'm aware that moved over from from guildford to manchester in the off season and lots of fans listening might not know why you chose to come to the Storm. So without getting too personal, what, what were the reasons for, for coming up north? Um, Manchester's always been an interesting club to me. Like, I, I, Affinity, I, I, the first time I ever really knew about Affinity was when he was playing in Cardiff, uh, you know, a few years back. And um, 
I was part of the the academy and the junior system there in Cardiff, and uh, and obviously getting into the elite league when I was in Milton Keynes, coming to Car- coming to Manchester, sorry, and seeing different styles, different rinks, how the teams play, how you know the level of skill and things, and it it always intrigued me. And uh, obviously Manchester as a city, for one thing, is obviously you know it's great, and the hockey side of things kind of just it kind of fell into place really. Like I um. I really enjoyed my time in Guildford with the players that were there and I met some really good friends and I went to a wedding there in the summer and um, still speak to the, so some of the boys to this day and, and ex-teammates and what have you and I really enjoyed it and like I just found that really my opportunities when I was first there were 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 there for me to take and by the end of it, it was kind of maybe tailing off a touch and uh just some honest conversations were, were needed to be had, and I had those conversations, and you know, and it was they were keen to bring me back, but it was just a case of you know I wanted to, a bit more responsibility, just like any other player, you know, it's just one of those things. So um, I wanted to in Manchester that like you know had a really good year last year, you know, and on, on the upward trend. So I thought it was a good move, and with. You know, flag uh, flags coming in as coach. It was always good to have a new perspective on how people, different coaches, see the game and things, and uh, almost like a fresh canvas. You know, so uh, you to to paint a new picture or whatever you want to, however you want to phrase it. Like, um, so yeah, I think it was just a, a good opportunity for me to come and um, make that push to, you know, have that responsibility and you know maybe getting the foot in the door with the the GB to set up or um just to kind of express myself a bit more on the ice to maybe what I what I had the last couple of years of my time in Guildford. I would say you've you've definitely done that so far. Uh you touched a little bit earlier in one of the other questions about the team kind of coming together and, and gelling as a whole and that process starting to happen. How has it been like for you adjusting to to life in a different place? Obviously, you've not had to travel as far as some of your uh, teammates to get to Manchester, but it's still a new environment all the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. I think anywhere, anytime there's a there's a change, regardless of what it is in your life, it's always something that can uh, uh, bring up some challenges. But um, no, I've you know I've enjoyed. Um, it. I, I, Liz, my uh, fiance, now she's she's here with me and. I'd say that we we we're finally settled in now, and uh, we enjoy it here. Like we we love the we love Altrincham as a town, and um, you know having the odd visits up to into Manchester and things. It's great, and um, yeah, I think like it, it's what I found is that we we bought a house back in uh, Newport, just outside of Cardiff, about two years ago now, and. Uh, it's a crazy how much stuff you actually have. That's one thing I've kind of had to deal with because we've had to organize our house in order to then come up here. And we, I, I packed my car when I, I remember the, maybe the first year I went to Milton Keynes and I had a bigger car than I do now and it wasn't even half full and I have a smaller car now and it was jam-packed. And I'm thinking, how much stuff do I actually have? And then my girlfriend's been back and forth probably two times with a car full of stuff. So I'm thinking, how on earth do we have this much stuff and a house back home? It's just beyond me. So I think that's probably one of the main challenges is just trying to control how much stuff we actually have. <laughs> um, uh, just going off that as well, Owen, obviously, like you say, um, moving up to Manchester as a native Mancunian myself, um, I just wanted to ask you a bit more. Like, So you'll have, obviously, goals you want to achieve with the storm whilst you're here, but is anything that you want to do whilst you're in Manchester off the ice that sort of, you know, some maybe try some local Manchester cuisine or maybe go and see a local uh, site that you've always wanted to see whilst you're here? Um, I'm a big hiker. Uh, me and my girlfriend love doing a, a, our hikes and walks and stuff. So hopefully weather permitting, we'll do a, quite a few hikes and a bit of the Lake Districts and stuff. And obviously we're not far from Snowdon, which is awesome. Um, so it'd be nice to go and do the trek there, could give given the timetable and games and training permitted. Um, but the one thing with the food is I remember when I was actually in Guildford, one of the one of the fans who was there, um, one warm-up, she came up and she had like, I want to say it was like this pasta in a pie or something. Is that does that ring any bells or am I making it up? A pie, uh, I don't is know. It like I, a, I think 
I'll, I'll have to send I'll, I'll, I'll send one of you boys a picture. I'll find it. But it was something that they had, and I'm assuming it was from the market, and they brought it to the ring, um, and we're eating it during the warm up. And I thought, oh my god, that looks fantastic. And I, I've ever since then I wanted it, but I haven't had the time or the chance to have a look and find it. So I'm gonna have to find the name of it. It sounds outrageous, I know, but it was one of those, it was one of those ones where you look and you're like, oh, that looks unbelievable. <laughs> so <laughs> I, but I, I'm a big foodie as well. So like any any, any decent restaurants, I'm, I love my Indian food. So any any recommendations, fire in my way, and I will be visiting them. Well, we have an entire curry mile in in Manchester, so definitely give that a check out if you um yeah if you are a fan of Indian food. Uh, what I will say is, if you're listening to this and you remember giving or talking about a pasta pie with Owen Griffiths, then please do get in touch with I the will, show so we can try I, I and will find, find it. it. Say, well, now that you say pasta pie, it kind of sounds outrageous, but I will <laughs> find it. I will find the tweet and I will say I will show you it because I, I got sent a photo of it. I will find it. Definitely. Because you've talked about food things. I mean, have you been to the Manchester Arndale Market yet? Yeah. Have you been to Pancho's Burritos? No, I've seen it, but I haven't been in there now. Get involved. He's been there years. I was one of his first customers when Battle would have still oh, lived okay. in Manchester. And he always oh, remembers me when I go back. Top guy. Good food. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll get on I'll get on that. There's, I've got some family coming up this uh uh, tomorrow actually and they're going to stay up for the games and stuff so i think we might end up having a trip into manchester so maybe i'll have a look at that tomorrow i remember um when we we're doing the meet the players now there's a lot of talk about golf between uh, oh, God. <laughs> you uh former guildford boys we did ask ryan about it last week he said uh he's, he's the better of uh you guys do you care to dispute that no i don't he's definitely he definitely is he's an absolute stick as uh as we'd say he's he well uh, he's definitely a scratch golfer. Um, he's one of the better ones for sure. Joe Morrow is a very good golfer. Critchlow is a very good golfer. Durfling's, Durfling has got a good swing on him. There's some good golfers on the team, so he does get quite competitive, uh, which is always fun. Um, and like you said about uh, other things to do in Manchester, like uh, like when I was in Guildford, it was obviously blessed with a lot of good courses around Surrey and things. And uh, like that's definitely one thing I'd like to you know, explore a lot more of is uh, some of the local golf courses and things like that here. I'm just, as you can tell, I'm quite into my sport. I, I would assume as, as a sports athlete that you would yeah. be. Um, it, it's going to be a bit of an interesting weekend this week, not just because you're in new jerseys, but you and a bunch of other of your teammates will be facing your former team in Guildford. You mentioned earlier, you've got some, some friends over there and, and some people to play against. And I wanted to ask, how much of a competitive edge does that give you as in trying to get one over on your old friends, people that you spent so much time with? Is there sort of an added added element of competition there? Yeah, I'd say so. I think it goes a bit both ways, to be honest with you. I think it's like, uh, you know, you always want to see, like, you know, players and, 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 and past teammates do well, but maybe not necessarily right in front of your face. Um, so... Um, yeah, like it's it's always good, and I think it brings out uh, definitely a competitive edge. Maybe a bit of a uh, bit of smack talk and uh, some words I probably shouldn't say on here, but uh, might be said. But I think that'll go both ways. I don't think it'll just be me firing them off. I think they'll be firing right back at me. So uh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's it, and I, like you said, like I, like there's these these are old teammates of mine, and I love them, and I got on really well with them, and I still do, but. You know, when it comes to being on the ice and stuff, if there's an opportunity to to put one in the back of the net or hit one of them over, it's, I'm definitely not going to miss that opportunity to do so. I think the the Storm fans will be be happy to hear that one for sure. That was that was a good answer there. Um, one thing that we we spoke about just before we we started recording this was another thing I'd like you to answer. You talk about at the very start, you spoke about the Halloween party that you guys had. And I want to know maybe who you'd think would be who came dressed the best and who maybe was rivaling your Star Wars costume for the worst. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm definitely down there with, with with some of the worst. It wasn't my best, um, my best Halloween outfit, I'll tell you that. But um, I'd say the best was uh, Harry's Peaky Blinder outfit. I, he actually scared me a little bit. I thought he was a Peaky Blinder for a, for a little bit. Um, so I thought he, his was awesome. He looked really cool. 
And then there's some interesting ones. We had a couple of England rugby players, um, which was kind of cool. It was kind of funny. But I think for me, it's got to be Hebe's, uh, Grant Hebe's, uh, Jesus one. I didn't think that was very Halloween-y. Uh, but uh, yeah, he pulled it off. But yeah, for me, if there, if it wasn't me being last, it's definitely him as last as the uh, ranking in the costume. I'm well, sure if you ask, I'm sure if you ask Grant, he'd say me as well. But <laughs> maybe we'll have to we'll have to see if we can get that as a bit of a, cl- a clip <laughs> for next week. But uh, yeah, anyway, Owen, thank you so much for joining us this week. It's been an absolute pleasure. No problem, no problem at all. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Do you have a business that you want to promote to thousands of people per week? Well, the Storm Report could be the podcast for you. Get in touch and find out how you can sponsor segments, interviews, or even the whole show. Get involved with Manchester's elite ice hockey team by contacting Mark at ManchesterStorm.com. That's M-A-R-K at ManchesterStorm.com. Get involved. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, We're going to go on to the What's on the Radar segment now. And I think with the people that are going to be, the teams that we're going to be playing against this weekend, it was very fitting to have someone like Owen Griffiths because he's one of quite a few that are going to be playing against a former team this weekend in Guildford. Um, Definitely one of the ones to watch. And who's your ones to watch, Dean? Well, firstly, obviously, like you said, Owen Griffiths playing against his former team, he's going to be someone who's going to be quite knowledgeable and sort of have a bit of inside knowledge. But I would also mention that Ryan Hughes will be a good one to watch as well. Like, say, another former Guildford Flames uh, player we've managed to acquire this season. Obviously, last time we uh, played the Guildford Flames this year was in the Challenge Cup where we took a 5-1 win. And Hughes in that game, he got a goal and an assist so I reckon in that this time around he could be looking to do a bit more damage this time I think damage he's definitely capable of doing speaking of who got on the score sheet that day last time Guildford came to town someone that scored then is Alex Robert and I'm looking to see if he can double up and do that again um, I think that that line that he plays on we'd like to see a little bit more offensive output from I think that's fair to say and there's no time like the present Aiden, what about you? I'm going to go with a man who's had a unfortunately stop start start to the season. Uh, Mr. Stephen Johnson, obviously, he, he, he got injured um, before the season started. Um, he came back for a couple of games, picked up another injury, but now he's back and he made a big impact on Sunday in Nottingham. Um, I've always loved his energy. He's one of those guys, he's a 200 foot player. Um, both ends of the ice, he's always given you good value. Um, and key to our success on Sunday was his ability to forecheck, to really be a pest to the Nottingham Demon, especially when they were kind of trying to get the puck out of their own zone. And obviously looking at the weekend, going to the game against Guildford in our building, that high energy style always brings you rewards. And then we're going to Sheffield on Saturday. Like, if we're going to get anything out of that game, everybody needs to bring the energy. And I can think of no better example than Stephen Johnson. Definitely so. I think energy, momentum, we've got that from the win against Nottingham last week. And I think it would be good if we get to bring that into these two games. Dean, tell me a little bit about the Guildford game in particular. Guildford currently seventh, I have, in the standings so far, but that might not be representative of how they're actually playing. No, you're right. Um, So, obviously, at the time of recording, Flames have taken five out of potential ten points from their recent game so they are going to be looking to try and add up on that obviously hopefully we can put a little bit of a stop to that but as a little bit of a factoid as well uh storm have beaten the flames eight times at home at the storm shelter every time we played them so we have got the good stats when we're playing guildford against um at home so hopefully we'll make this one number nine it definitely sounds like there's reason to be confident i think um I'm going to introduce a little bit of a a blessing or a curse. The Storm will be fielding new jerseys. There'll be the new look Storm going in to this weekend's game at home. I think if you've been on social media at all so far uh, this week, you will have seen posts about it, getting ready, gearing up for the Halloween event. Aiden, it's a beautiful jersey. 
It's a beautiful jersey. I do I do like this year's Halloween. We're going with the Day of the Dead theme, but we do have lots planned for the game night on Friday. We do have our traditional fancy dress competition. Um, we're going to run that in the second period break. If anybody would like to take part in that, obviously come in as uh, fancy, fancy dress as you can. Be on theme, of course. Um, doesn't have to be Day of the Dead. It can be anything Halloween or horror related. Or even in my case, a few years ago, it was one of the Hanson brothers in Slapshot. Um, but we are going to have everybody congregate second period break. What we're going to do, we're going to pick some finalists. We're going to take pictures of the finalists. And that's all going to go into the Manchester Storm WhatsApp group, which you will get the opportunity to join again on the match night. We're going to have everybody vote for a winner. And the winner is going to get a £50 voucher for the Storm shop. So that's going to be great. We're also going to have some fun games on the night. There's going to be pinatas hanging around the rink. That, um, some of the kids are going to have the opportunity to uh, to beat up. Um, it's going to be a great night. Definitely sounds like something you're not going to want to miss. Dean, you'll be in pride of place, I'm sure, when you're stood up there on the camera. Everyone will be able to see you. Are you going to go in costume at all? Uh, yeah, I think I might stick with my traditional uh, Mac Art, Max Artist uh, costume. Obviously, we'll see if people can spot the difference. Uh, obviously, uh, hint is try and look for who's got the better beard. I was going to say, mate, you got, you got to do some work on that beard. You need, you need to catch him up. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's no, it's not as uh, girthy as we'll say as Max is, but uh, you know it's an attempt. So I will say that it is uh, growing. But no, like I say, it is always a fun night at the Storm Shelter, especially on Halloween. You know, seeing all the fans getting involved, obviously, um, seeing everyone, um, obviously not just the jerseys, but going the extra mile in getting the making the Storm Shelter extra scary and. I think this year it will be no different. Hopefully, hopefully we look we'll look scary on the ice in our spooky scary jerseys, but hopefully we actually are a scary team to play as well. As we'll need to bring our A game against Sheffield Aiden. What what can we expect from that away trip? I mean, I've seen many kickings of our collective asses in Sheffield over my many years as a storm fan. Um I really hope this isn't one of them. Um like I just say every time anyway. But I mean, I think it's one thing we have improved a lot. As I've said, I think I said last week, you know, our, our road form has improved a lot. We now go into pretty much any arena knowing we've got a fighting chance rather than necessarily just going to be hanging on for the best result we can possibly get. Um, and we've already got that win over Sheffield just a few weeks ago. So we know we can compete with these guys. We know it's going to be tough. They're always very strong at home as a strong pretty much any team to play against. So as long as the guys, you know, Follow follow the plan that that uh, flag sets out as he spoke about last time we played Sheffield. If everybody gives absolutely hundred percent in that one, commits, puts the body on the line, made the most of the. Ch- I mean, that's what they did very very well in Nottingham on Sunday. They they took the chances when they were presented, and um, which were few and far between for quite long periods of the game. That might well have to be what they need to do on Saturday to get the win. Okay, okay. I think as far as predictions go, I had a bit of a howler last week. Uh, I tried to be bold and go out with a... Um... It's your <laughs> fault. Just reminded me. Bold, he say, predicted say, shut out. He said the word. Uh, you I said the word, the, word, the S word. Um, <laughs> yeah, very preferable. Um, cursing of the team. Hopefully that doesn't happen this time around, but I'm still going to ask for you guys to give me certain predictions. I won't go too far as to say score lines and stuff like that, because I don't want to spoil the forecast that will come out later this week before we play Guildford. But, guys, there are four points available. Two in the league, two in the cup. Dean, how many points do you think we will take from this weekend? Oh, now you're asking me. You're putting me on the spot. Well, um, obviously... You know, I am going to be biased and say I'm hopefully we take full four points away from the weekend. You know, it's what we want, you know. And, you know, I think Flags, especially this weekend, he's going to look to try and sort of get a bit more consistency with the team. So I'm going to be bold and say I'm going to think we're going to take the full four points away this weekend. There you go. There you go. Aidan, agree or disagree? How optimistic are you feeling? I would love to agree, absolutely, 100%. Um... But my head and my experience tells me that we're probably going to drop at least one point this weekend. Not that I want that to be the case, but I'm going to go with a three-point weekend. 
three-point weekend would mean that one of these games goes to overtime. If my ability to collate statistics is correct, uh, we haven't been to overtime in the league thus far. Every time we've done that has been in the Challenge Cup. So statistics would put money on us going into overtime against Sheffield. I would probably say that if we are going to get two points from the Guildford game, doing it in regulation would be preferred so that we're doing it on the first half of the back-to-back. But um, we could be in for a challenging weekend. Hopefully, the guys that will be out there on the ice are as pumped for it as we are here on Storm TV. But thank you very much for listening to this week's installment of the Storm Report. We have a great week. We hope to see you there at the Halloween night this weekend. Take care. That was the Storm Report, brought to you by Storm TV. Tune in next week for more exclusive insights. Tickets on sale now at ManchesterStorm.com.